For the last Pantheon Rise of the Fallen developer roundtable of 2021, Visionary Realms brought out creative and programming producer Chris Joppa Perkins and game designer Adam Mostel to talk about combat, a topic for which there is no shortage of opinions in the community. While combat will by no means be the only thing to do in Pantheon, it is a fundamental aspect of pretty much any MMO, and anything we spend a lot of time doing can kind of be a make or break aspect of that game. Combat is a broad and complex system though, so if you haven't already, I suggest watching the videos I've made in the past about Pantheon's combat system to at least get a baseline. If you don't want to be out of the loop about Pantheon's development, hit the subscribe button now because this channel is dedicated to following it closely. I'm not affiliated with Vision Realms, I've just been tracking the project for a long time and I like to share what I learn to make it easier for you to track it with me. This round table was over an hour long, so I think it's time for a good old fashioned Bazgroom TV summary where I bring you the highlights in a fraction of the time. Just so you know, I'm going to be focusing more on the new information from this round table that is confirmed. The roundtable definitely has a lot of discussion about their plans for the future and reiterating things from the past. So if you want to listen to the full recording, I'll include a link to it in the description, but I want to hone in on the things that are more grounded. First, to know what we're up against in combat, let's hear the list of the types of creatures that we'll see in Terminus. We've got humanoid, animal, plant, insect, undead, incorporeal, giant, fey, lycanthrope, vampiric, elemental, supernatural, ooze, construct, mechanical, and dragon kind. And unmortal. Ooh. We actually just added that one per Justin's request. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, those are just the creature types. Within each of those types are a number of different races. So as a basic example, just within the humanoid category, there are not only humans, but also things like elves, ratkin, orcs, etc. And then within each of those NPC races are a number of different classes, much like the players have a race and a class. So you could be going up against a Ratkin Rogue or a Ratkin Shaman. Not only do NPC classes share many of the same abilities that their respective player classes do, but NPCs also have a limited action set just like players do. So a Ratkin Shaman won't have access to all Shaman spells at all times. A Ratkin Shaman might have a different set of abilities than an Orc Shaman. So you can already start to imagine the wide variety of NPCs you could encounter, and therefore the wide variety of strategies you'll need to overcome them. But it goes even deeper than that when you take Pantheon's disposition system into account. Dispositions introduce even more variability into encounters by allowing designers to assign any number of different dispositions to each NPC, and then every time that NPC spawns, it has a chance of spawning with one of those dispositions. When an NPC has a disposition, it alters only the way that NPC behaves. And by the way, since Jesse Klinger asked about it in my last video, yes, bosses have a very similar system called manifestations. As a couple examples of dispositions though, an alarmist NPC will be more likely to run to find help, or a mana crazed NPC will focus on killing a mana user in your group and can't be taunted away. Those are just two of dozens of different dispositions that you might find, so each time you go to a particular encounter, there's a chance that the mobs will behave differently than they did last time, requiring you to adjust accordingly. But how would you know? Like any challenging game, there's an element of trial and error to this. Or you could bring someone along who's skilled in the perception system. You know, when we've talked about perception in the past, um, one of the kind of uh, equations that we tried to make, um, you know, is we refer to Sherlock Holmes, right? And, and this iconic sense of being an investigator, um, you know, evaluating your environment, deducing clues, and trying to uncover stories and lore behind Terminus. Um, but that, you know, when you think about that, um, that's can come across as a fairly independent activity, right? It's not necessarily something that is, um, it, 
enmeshed within group play, enmeshed within adventuring. Um, so there is another role that we have in mind when we talk about keepers when it comes to adventuring in a party. Um, and that is the role of, you know, an archaeologist or a scholar that's assisting your party through the knowledge that they bring to bear. Um, the very first example that I gave of this was actually, um, you know, I think of the mummy movies, right? And you've got, I, I wouldn't even remember the character, right? But you've got, you know, your older gentleman who's there and he's, you know, got the scripts and the scrolls and the books and, you know, without him, you wouldn't have that same story. Yeah, um, so without revealing much more than that, I can confirm that perception is being designed to have an intersection with adventuring and crafting, um, much like those two spheres already intersect with each other. Um, and, uh, you know, I will just acknowledge that being able to discern certain dispositions and traits is one such example of that, um, but definitely just scratching the surface. One of the most common critiques of Pantheon I see from the casual observer is that combat looks boring. And this isn't too surprising considering Pantheon's combat system has always been in the process of working toward its truest form. What makes combat in Pantheon really stand out has been implemented only recently, like in the past year with the addition of NPC combat awareness and many new ability mechanics. Even still, there's quite a bit of work left to be done on animations and visual feedback to make it feel more satisfying and easier to understand what's going on just by looking at it from the viewer's perspective. From the player perspective though, I can tell you from recent first-hand experience that Pantheon's combat is not a walk in the park by any means, and often requires intense focus. And we're still learning of more ways that combat in Pantheon is designed to be as engaging and skillful as possible while still holding true to its tab targeting philosophies. Here are just a couple. Uh, this is something we've kept under wraps for a while, but all characters will be able to sprint uh, for short distances. It, it will utilize endurance as a resource to do so, and it is tied to a skill system, allowing your, you to sprint faster as your sprinting skill increases. Um, and there's just so many really, really fun combat related implications to sprint, not only in its in combat use, but even things like, you know, utilizing the momentum you get from sprint when you're jumping or uh, other things I'll, I'll leave unmentioned. Um, but it's part of the overall uh, shift towards uh, traversal mechanics like sprint, climbing, swimming, these various things utilizing endurance as a, uh, a comprehensive resource for all of it. So the way that you will you know, utilize climbing, swimming, sprinting in a situation where you need to do all three uh, becomes a more meaningful decision based on your total endurance pool, um, which is improvable and, and can grow through itemization of various means. Um, and then you know, making sure that you're using them wisely to have enough endurance to do you know, what you need to do there. So but sprint for me is a big one. It's already in. Uh, first uh, testing session of the new year. Once that rolls out, um, our, uh, our testers will be able to experience that. Uh, this is for all our casters out there. Um, we are removing critical hit chance from offensive spells as you know one of the many updates that are coming into combat. Um, there are going to be other ways to achieve big numbers, um, but crits as an RNG component make it really difficult to create spells that feel punchy in their own right. Um, you typically see critical chance on spells, you know, when you're t looking at a higher APM action per minute MMO, um, because the potential damage of those crits gets spread out across many constant casts. Um, but, you know, we're looking to make casting more deliberate and we're looking to make casting more costly. Um, and so what that means is that if spells can crit, they can be devastatingly overpowered if they do crit. Um, or on the other side of that, you know, if you don't get a crit, it can feel way too punishing if you spent a lot of mana for very little gain. Um, so our goal is to make those offensive spells feel really uniquely powerful for their cost in their own right um, and then maximizing the potential of those spells is now going to be more a matter of navigating skills and resistances um, rather than navigating just rng and you know we think that's going to help differentiate how playing a caster feels compared to playing a melee if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I never ask you to donate to Pantheon's crowdfunded development. Everyone has different financial situations and level of risk tolerance, so what you do with your money is up to you. However, if you do make the decision to pledge, and my videos have in any way informed that decision, I'd appreciate it if you'd list me as a referral when you get your post-pledge survey. My account is bazgrimtv at gmail.com, and that just helps me know that I'm covering the things that you want to know about. 
Make sure to tune in for my next video, which will be a comprehensive year in review of Pantheon's development in 2021. So until then, everybody, have a happy holiday, stay curious, and adventure on. Yeah.